welcome to, to everyone who's here today. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us for this. Uh, my name is Nick Maturo. I'm a project manager with Elan working on our Quebec relations project. Um, before we go any further, I, I do want to begin by recognizing that Elan and the office space that I'm speaking to you from is located in Jojage, which is the original name for Montreal in Ganyan Geha, the language of the Mohawk, also known as Muniang, which is, which is the Anishinaabe name given to the city by the Algonquin. Um, even though we're speaking to each other remotely and not in the same physical space, I do want to start by acknowledging that fact before we go any further and give you an opportunity to reflect on that where you're located as well. So this webinar is a co-presentation of Elan's membership department, our Quebec relations project, as well as, uh, of course, the machinery. Um, so without any further ado, we're going to get right into the topic at hand and learn about uh, what I think is an extremely useful resource for artists and organizations alike in arts and culture. Uh, and to do that, we're very fortunate to have with us today, Ariel Lefebvre. Ariel works as a uh, service coordinator with Machinery. He's also a graduate of Montreal, uh, pardon me, McGill University's School of, School of Music and has worked on numerous musical and lyrical productions across Quebec and the Maritimes. Uh, Ariel has also served as an administrative coordinator for a number of cultural organizations as well. So thank you again, Ariel, for being here. I am going to unshare my screen and hand things over to you. Hi Nick, uh, thanks for for having me today. Thanks for uh, thanks to Elan for uh, giving giving us the the opportunity to tell a bit more about uh, well about ourselves, the machinery, but also about the uh, the tools, our toolbox. Uh, so I'll share my screen to start the presentation. Without further ado, here I go. Okay, so yeah, as uh, as uh, well you probably know by now, the presentation today uh, I it, it is like has been organized to give you a bit more of an idea about the toolbox uh but uh before we actually dive into that i'd like to present to you like tell you a bit more about the machinery uh our other services what we do um in order for you to maybe to 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 learn something about an organization that might help you in your project um so who we are uh, so the machinery is very simply, we're an organization that uh, shares resources, uh, tools, and expertise. Uh, we try to use a diversified, customized, and inclusive approach in the way we help people. Uh, so through our community, uh, we try to strengthen and showcase artistic and cultural aspirations. Um, so the machinery really was created by artists for artists. Uh, it really arose from a collective thought process from artists and cultural workers uh, around uh, the question of access to human resources uh, and the sharing of management approaches and tools uh, in the whole cultural sector. Uh, so if I tell you a bit more about our services, um, our services are divided within four main categories. So first of all, we offer counseling services. Uh, we have some services related to human resources. Uh, we offer uh, pedagogical activities. And finally, we offer tools, uh, which is why, why I'm mostly going to present today. Uh, so if I do a short overview of each service, just give you a few words about the, the main ones. Um, so within the counseling sort of section, we first have the orientation sessions, which are uh, brief meetings with the machinery's team to analyze the needs of uh, your artistic project or to reflect on the stages of uh, development of your organization or even to clarify your calendar of activities, for example. Uh, so these meetings are usually 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, then we have the organizational mapping, uh, which is uh, so through that service, the machinery uh, machinery team provide a 360 degree analysis of the company or collective environments. And we deliver an action plan with uh, concrete steps uh, for the strategic development of, of that company. Uh, then when it comes to HR, uh, our main service is the collaboration unit which is a service that connects uh, artists and cultural workers uh, from our community in order to establish uh, a, collaborate, a collaborative working arrangement uh, for a specific one-time project or need. Then we have the support unit, which is uh, a service that promotes the development of established or growing artistic companies 
uh, by mobilizing a customized self of, of uh, art uh, administrators to respond directly to uh, an artist's need. So um, these services are a bit more selective, usually more targeted towards uh, established companies. As we said, it's a multi-year, like a, a an ongoing long-term service that we offer to some companies. Currently, I think we only we support three or four companies, if I'm not uh, wrong. Then in our um, learning activities or pedag pedagogical activities, we offer the coffee chats, which are informal interviews with administrators uh, or artists that inspire us. Uh, usually we give that in the morning, uh, very informal, as I said, with a coffee. Uh, usually at the end of the interview, we uh, hold a short Q&A session with the interviewee for the, the attendance. Uh, then we have the expert workshops, uh, which are uh, uh, group co-development sessions. Uh, they allow participants to identify solution to certain issues through sharing their experience or knowledge. Uh, we usually invite uh, two uh, specialized resources to to feed the exchanges and bring their own input into the the different uh, topics that we tackle during these uh, these workshops. Uh, then we offer the 360 clinics, uh, which uh, take the form of six to eight micro training sessions that cover a number of topics in admin strat uh, strategy, uh, strategy, sorry, development uh, with a set cohort of attendants uh, to promote deeper exchanges. So these are usually given in partnership with other cultural organizations. For example, this year we've done a series with uh, May. Um, and then we have the toolbox, uh, which I want to tell you a bit more about today. Um, so the toolbox uh, contains more than 250 practical uh, and strategic tools. More specifically, uh, I think we had two, we are at 266 tools, 266 tools. Uh, so 125 of them in English. Uh, so these tools are designed to improve uh, the management of artistic projects and cultural organizations. Uh, they provide professional frameworks for planning, organizing, uh, and simplified management in the area of culture. Um, so the purpose of the tools is to improve and facilitate the quality of work through templates, guides, outlines, and methods for uh, immediate application to a specific or to specific work uh, situations. So um, if I show you a bit more about the classification system of the, the toolbox, uh, there are in the toolbox, there are five main sections. Um, so uh, first one being vision, strategy, and governance, then uh, administration, followed by communication, dissemination and production. So just looking at this uh, table of contents, uh, you can see that every tool, uh, every section of the toolbox is also subdivided into toolkits, which are most specifically about certain themes within that broader category. Uh, so if I go, for example, in the uh, startup and implementation one here, uh, it will bring me to the that section, the that toolkit is the 120. So you can see that every tool has a call number with uh, a name. So uh, usually like you have access to this catalog, which also gives a, a short summary, a short description of every tool. Uh, so about the toolbox itself, uh, it most of the tools are offered in both languages, so both in French and in English, uh, but uh, most of them are offered in both languages. Some of them are offered only in French or only in English, but we're really working hard to try to make them as bilingual as possible. Uh, we've uh, partnered with Elan in the past to translate some of those tools uh, that I'm actually going to, to show you today. So if I go back to my presentation, or should I go back to my presentation? Actually, I will uh, show you some of the tools. I think we're at this point. Uh, just give me a second here. So I wanted to start with uh, one of the tools here that we offer, which is the 114 Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunity, and Threats. So these tools I've selected only because of the different formats uh, that they present. Uh, no 
like and also i think that they cover topics that many artists uh are having questions about or need help with so these can be very useful for you uh so if i talk about before getting into the tool itself i want to talk a bit more about the overview page so every tool um has an overview page uh at its start on the first uh, page so this overview page has uh the goal to tell you a bit more about that tool so first of all you can see well purpose of the tool it just gives you a brief summary of of how this tool can be used target users very self-explanatory you can see artists administrator uh, administrators or cultural workers uh distribution if you're in uh, an, a, an organization usually it's to show if it's something to be used internally or if it's something that you share with with external parties uh the level of difficulty some of the tools are very easy to use uh, very self-explanatory especially when it's guides some of them are a bit harder to use to take a bit more time to get used to but uh all of them have been really thought to uh to have been really designed to, to to make them as accessible as possible but just because of the the nature of some of the topics uh, some of them can be a bit harder to to, to get used to uh support uh it it, it just kind of shows you uh what it can be applied in sometimes we in in the uh, overview page in the support section we talk about uh if sometimes you might need external support from uh, a consultant or something like that in most cases these tools can be used pretty easily by yourself without the help of an external consultant uh frequency of use some of the tools uh, can be used very very often very regularly some of the tools are made to be used uh maybe once in a while uh, really depends on the topic and finally the references uh is simply uh, the other tools or even external references that might be useful or helpful uh to to show you how to to use that tool or just to to tackle that uh, specific topic um, I want to uh, mention that all the tools have been created, uh, as you can see here with the, the little, um, the little uh, uh, note here, that all of the tools have been created under, under the Creative Commons License 4.0, which means that uh, they are entirely shareable for free and uh, editable. Um, the only thing that we ask from the people who use the tools are that uh, the original credits not be removed so credit the machinery or all of our partners and that uh you don't monetize those tools yourself if you share them uh, but apart from that all the tools are fully customizable you can uh, change them modify them as much as you want so this tool specifically the strength weakness opportunity and threats uh, template which is more commonly known as swat is very simply just an uh, and a, like a self-evaluation or uh, assessment of your uh, environment, the environment through through which you as an individual artist or even as a company evolve. First of all, as you can see, all the, the, the notes in blue are uh, just examples that you can uh, change or keep if you think it's relevant for you. But for example, in the strength one, you will uh, you can actually talk about all your strengths. Uh, you have uh, an artistic unicity that makes you really, really uh, stand out. Um, you have a strong team, all these things, all the things that make your activity more uh, easy to achieve uh then the weaknesses again self-explanatory maybe the obstacles that you 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 are facing or just the things that you you think need a bit more work uh within your 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 practice or your organization if you're in a, an, an organization then the opportunities which are um anything that that you see could help you uh as you can see here the technological changes the economic trend uh, trends the political trends uh the changes in the sector uh or just something that the stars are aligned or something like that that can be as simple as that and then the threats are possible obstacles that you may face in the future uh sometimes threats are not like they can be very broad, it can be something very small, something bigger, but it's just to help you have a 
better overview of, of all these different components. Then uh, when you have all this listed, you can use the analytic grid here to just sort of compare the strength weaknesses with the opportunities and threats. And from there, as you can see, you can determine better actions to take to either overcome uh, the obstacles or the threats or the, the, the weaknesses, or even uh, capitalize on the, the strengths or the opportunities. So this is just something to help you take a step back from, from it all and see the broader picture. Uh, and then you can use this to have a small diagnosis for, for yourself. Uh, then if I show the next tool, uh, which is 263, the uh, annual budget for arts organizations. So this tool, uh, despite its name, I think is also very useful for individual, individual artists. It is a very exhaustive tool, very, very broad. So here, as you can see, uh, this tool has uh, several uh, tabs. If I go into the overview, well, you have the, the overview, as I, I told you earlier. Um, but if I go then uh, in the second tab, we have the simple summary, but we also have a bigger summary, which is very, very, very broad, as I said, of all the expenses or uh, revenues that a company or even an individual artist can have within a year. It's always very helpful to work that way because that you can really see from a project to another how things are evolving. Sometimes for a project, you have a bit of a, an extra for another, you have a bit less money that you like. So sometimes it can help you balance things out when you have a bigger, broader picture. But I want to uh, bring your attention as individual artists towards the creation tabs. Uh, these creation tabs are, or, or budgets are very, very useful because uh, they can really be uh, helpful when you, you for example, you create a grant application and you want to have an external budget before you actually input the, the data into the application itself. Um, so as I said, this is very exhaustive. Some of the, the lines might not be applicable or relevant for you, but uh, sometimes it can just remind you of things that you might have forgotten. Uh, so you just enter the data in the, the, the white columns. So you have a forecast, a revised, uh, an actual one and the difference between the actual and the revise and forecast is automatically uh, calculated, which can really help you keep uh, keep track of, of all these expenses or revenues. Uh, by the way, all the input, all the information that you put into uh, these tabs will be uh, will be shown into the big summary. So it's very useful if you have multiple projects that you use one tab per project which then are reflected into the bigger uh, budget, which can be really helpful if you want to, for example, apply for a bigger grant, or if you want just to keep track, a track of your yearly uh, income or, uh, or, or uh, expenses or revenues for projects. So we have the creation tabs, but we also have production tabs if your project is in the production phase and presentation tabs if you are currently in the process of working with presenters to uh, show your, your, your uh, work. Uh, we also have a revival uh, tab, for example, if you're touring. Uh, so each of these tabs are divided by a sort of uh, phase into a project lifetime. But as I said, all this information is, uh, is then shown into the bigger summary. So this is uh, all for this tool. Then if I go to the next tool, which is the uh, bookkeeping and bank reconciliation tool. Um, this one is very useful, uh, not only for, um, for uh, artists, uh, but uh, not only for companies, but also for artists. If you're, for example, uh, registered to uh, the tax returns, um, if you're an uh, autonomous worker, freelancer, I mean. So this one is very self-explanatory in its structure as well. Uh, first, you have a summary for every month. Uh, I don't know why there's already uh, a value entered here, maybe uh, somebody or or someone in our team entered a value here, but uh, ideally this would be blank when you, you get uh, the original file. 
So, uh, yeah, you have the three from uh, like on a yearly basis, but then if you go uh, on the monthly tabs here, you simply have uh, columns where you can enter the types of revenues or expenses. Here you have a, a, a list that you can pick from, which really helps uh, determining what, what the expense or revenue type is. Then you have the, the date then the supplier, customer, the number invoice, the financial year. And then you have all these columns that you just fill with the, you know, the expenses, pre-tax, then it automatically calculates the, the GSC and the, QD, the QST. Um, all these are, are all calculated. You just have to enter the uh, pre-tax, um, the pre-tax values from your, your, your bills or whatever. Then you have the bank reconciliation section, which really helps you compare with your bank account. You can see here, if you have outstanding checks, you can document them and you can keep track and enter the uh, bank reconciliation here. So you can have a good idea of your bookkeeping versus the bank reconciliation uh, aspect of it. If I go into the March, uh, the March tab here, you can see I have a little section here that is not in the other, or it's, it is in every three months, like every three months uh, of the, the, the list, you have the uh, GST and QDS uh, uh, return that you can uh, calculate here. Actually, it's going to calculate it automatically from uh, all the bookkeeping that you've done for the last three months. So from that, it's much easier to, to file your tax return uh, on a uh, three months basis or annual basis if you're working that way. So that's it for that tool, which again, as I said, is pretty uh, instinctive to use, very intuitive, I mean, to use. Uh, then I want to show you the um, introductory guide to grant writing, which I think is one of our favorite tools at the Machinery, uh, very useful to many of our artists that we, we meet, uh, and we try to sort of share it as much as we can because i we think it's, it's very very broad and very um how can i say this it's very complete so this one uh quite simply is a guide it's just a written written guide about how to write a grant application so uh first of all you have clear sort of a structure of how to plan your your grant application um, starting with the, the artist or organizational prof profile. Some arts council take more time to create their profiles than others. So it just reminds you to not do it last minute. Then it takes every section and just put some uh, reflection points just uh, about the project. Like what is it going to be? What are the outcomes? Who is involved? Um, same thing with the impact statement. And then uh, the work plan for the, the scheduling just reminds you, okay, don't forget this, don't forget that. Same thing for the budget. Uh, and the supporting documents, just a reminder of like what to include, uh, what not to forget. Uh, uh, so same thing with the samples of previous works. And uh, here, a list of general recommendations. Uh, things not to forget, things to keep in mind. Uh, actually, I, I work on grant applications pretty often, and I go back to this tool all of the time because it's just a good way to remind myself of, okay, don't forget this, don't forget that. And then finally, you just have like a little follow-up section that tells you about, okay, what to do after you've submitted your application. If you were successful, if you get your grant, what to do. Uh, same thing if you didn't get your grant. Uh, first of all, don't take it personally, that kind of stuff just helps you keep a clear mind and uh, keeping your eyes on the goal. Uh, so that's it for this guide, which I'll, le I'll let you read by yourself. I think it's, it's, it's a good read. And then you have here the crowdfunding competitive grid when it comes to maybe autonomous revenue sources. So this one we try to keep as updated as we can, but of course things can evolve. But uh, these, uh, this will actually simply list 
of different uh, crowd, uh, crowdfunding uh, services. So you have here the Rush, Ulul, uh, Indiegogo, uh, you have so the, the URL, the location, if you want to work with maybe a more local services, it can help you select something uh, that way. Uh, here about the languages, you have a uh, better idea, the main categories of stuff that you, they usually uh, support, uh, the type, here is all or nothing or hybrid, all or nothing, meaning that if you don't get your goal, you don't get any of the money or hybrid, which is, well, you're, you're getting the money that you're, you, you, you got from the, the, the campaign, whether you reach your goal or not. Then here you have all the different, uh, the different numbers, the different figures related to the uh, platform fees. Uh, so some of some of the platforms have different types of uh, ways of, of uh, charging fees. So this is a good way just to know okay what's offered, what is the average. Uh, maybe find a solution that is better suited for you. Uh, type of transaction and the notes, which uh, some 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 services are more specialized for certain realities or certain ways of do, of campaigning for crowdfunding. Um, so it's as I said, very simply a comparative grid. Then uh, the last tool I want to show you today uh, is the uh, simplified social media manager. Uh, this one is actually very useful if you're the kind of person who likes to just work beforehand, do most of the work beforehand, and then not not uh, to have to, to think too much uh, in the process of maybe uh, promoting a show. Uh, so in this one, quite simply, you can prepare all you can prepare all your posts before actually posting them so uh first of all for example you would uh, post the date at which you would like to make that post you can post the time uh, the type of content uh, then the post itself as it says here content of your post so you just copy paste it here the visual if you have any url a video an image you can post uh, all of that information there and the URL, if you have a link to a website that you'd like to make. And here, if you're planning on, uh, on uh, setting a specific uh, budget for, for this promotion, then you can write it down here. And then all the rest is all about documenting the impact of a post. So after you posted something, you can come back to this and indicate a number of shares, likes, the comments, if there are any that you want to take note of because they're relevant. Uh, then the outreach, the clicks, and the notes, after which you can then uh, document the performance of a post to know, okay, well, this type of post really works, that other one does not, like it doesn't work uh, as much. Then you have a little section here with a weekly report, which can help you sort of keep track of uh, your growth or development on socials. Uh, so for example, first week you would write your current number of, of subscribers and you do that on a weekly basis and automatically the tool will calculate uh, the increase per week, uh, whether it's an increase or you, or you lose uh, followers, hopefully you don't, but it's just a good way to keep track of, of the, your social media as a whole. Um, in a nifty, very contained tool, which is quite uh, easy to use. And then you have a second um, second uh, tab here about the audit, which uh, can help you just keep track of all your uh, login info for some of the socials. If you're working with multiple people that are using the platform, uh, then it might be useful to have sort of a centralized place to put all this information. Of course, you try to keep it as secure as possible, but um, but it can be a very very practical thing to have. Then you, for example, here you will first of all indicate the platform. Then you can put the URL uh, to your your profile. Then the username, the mission. Uh, if you're working with multiple people and you want to use a certain social media uh, medium for a certain purpose or another for another per specific purpose, then you can write that purpose in that mission tab. So if you work with multiple people, everybody can be on the same page as to how to use this or that uh, medium. Then same thing for the objectives, if, if you're, you're having a certain goal in mind, uh, you can actually make sure that, okay, is that social media 
the use that we make of it is it consistent with our branding uh that can be helpful if you're working with uh with someone outside for uh communications for example page owner sometimes you will have to provide the owner's information it's always very useful at least to know who's owning the page uh i've seen that multiple times in different organizations where uh someone tries to access a page they need the owner in full but they don't even know who the owner is uh so it's just good uh good organize organizational practice um then here you can document the type of demographics uh that you're reaching with certain social media uh also uh, document the average for the posts uh that sort of stuff very very self-exploratory uh, uh information so yeah that i'd say that's it for the, the 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 five or six tools that i wanted to show you today just to give you a, an example of the different formats that we offer um so yeah i don't know if uh, anyone had questions so if i start with this tool the uh, annual general meeting document checklist so of course this one maybe is more specifically built for organizations but well who knows maybe there's something special that you will need that for. So if I dive into the tool itself, this one is very straightforward. It's simply a uh, checklist. In this case, it's a checklist for prepare uh, for preparing a general an annual general meeting. Uh, so in this case, you can see the different documents that can be prepared beforehand. Uh, then this uh, column here just explains okay or just indicates. Who's responsible for, for that document? Um, who's taking charge for preparing that document? The deadline here we can have as a, well, once again, uh, you can say, okay, it's for the AGM or it can be uh, prepared ideally some days or some weeks before the AGM. Uh, so everybody's on the same page as to when to prepare ev uh, everything. Um, as you can see, all the blue stuff is notes or examples that can obviously be erased and replaced. Uh, it's just to give you, it's just there to give you an idea of how to, to what kind of information goes where. The progress is a way for a team to sort of uh, inform or document where the preparation is, uh, so everybody can be aware of uh, what is somebody doing, what is somebody else doing, at what stage they are in the preparation, number of, uh, number of copies needed, if there are multiple copies that need to be made, and if something needs to be printed, it can be checked. So very self-exploratory, just uh, do that work as a team. Uh, now the fundraising approach file. Uh, this one is one of our older tools, but uh, it's still very relevant in case you want to work on philanthropy, that sort of stuff. Uh, this one is actually just a file that is empty that you fill by yourself uh, that you can use to approach uh, some potential donors, uh, either partners or, uh, or individuals. Um, so that tool has uh, different um, comments to guide you through through the the usage or the the filling of that tool so here for example insert you, the logo of your company the title of the document the year as you can see we have the elan uh logo here uh, elan which helped us uh translating that tool more specifically so here you have the image if you want to have an image related to the uh, fundraising campaign um here are all the sort of uh, uh table of content um mission mandate uh yeah very very self-explanatory again this tool can take a bit more time to fill but uh, it's already created so you only have to fill the information as opposed to having to sort of format a whole document um so here, once again, some explanations to tell you what to, to use, uh, what to put into the different sections. Uh, if you have any photos of, of past projects that you want to add uh, here, coming soon, all, all these different things, uh, the governance, the board of directors, finance committee, if applicable, uh, a call to action, that sort of stuff. Um, 
So it's it's just very straightforward, uh, but can be a very useful tool if you want to approach uh, an organization with a more precise plan, uh, and you want them to really know what your your goal is, who you're, what you're com- like, where you're coming from, where you're going, what are your goals, that sort of stuff. And finally, with the persona sheet, uh, so the persona sheet can be very useful. Uh, usually, we advise organizations to use it, but in some cases, we've also shared it with uh, individuals uh, when it came to uh, artists that have maybe a bigger established community and wanted to know a bit more about their own community of, of either their, their audience or even their partners, because sometimes your, uh, your target audience might not be who you think it is, it can be your, your partners, the, the presenters that you're trying to approach. Uh, so this tool quite simply allows you to create sort of archetypes of that audience. We are usually talking about two or three, maybe four, four tops uh, personas. So that tool is, is, is with that tool, you really let your, your imagination work, but you start from your uh, instinctive or intuitive knowledge of your community uh, or your audience. So uh, you will create a fake name, just put a fake name with a photo that you find online and you will document or try to create that person's uh, age, job status, family, place of residence, salary, that sort of information, the demographic information. Once again, you're just creating an archetype. You're not, you don't need, doesn't need to be absolutely accurate or right, but it's just to help you afterwards with, with how to plan your communications uh, according to the different personas you have. So you would, for example, identify some personality traits with that uh, specific persona. Um, and then you have the objectives, for example, if it's someone who uh, who is new to attending shows, but wants to know more about different types of arts, you can uh, document that, you can uh, indicate that, which will help you remember, okay, yeah, th- if I'm trying to reach that persona, I need to have maybe a more general approach, a more d- uh, democratic approach in order for them to be more, uh, not, I don't want to say scared, but to understand why I do a bit better, that sort of stuff. Uh, the irritants, for example, someone might say, I don't have as much time as I'd like to uh to attend uh, artistic performances, uh, then that can help you sort of determine, okay, how can I, uh, can I change my communications to make it more appealing for that type of, of audience? Then the biography, which is just a fake bio of that persona uh, to give you an idea of, of the, the, the journey of that person. Uh, same thing with the influences uh, and uh, other cultural consum- uh, consumption habits, for example. And finally, you have these uh, these two parts, like the, the columns, uh, that last column with the by motivation. So networking, is it is it networking? Is it artistic discipline? discipline? So here you just change the color of the uh, little squares as a like sort of a line to show the importance of this or that aspect. Uh, so of course, uh, a partner's motivations won't be the same as an audience motivation. So you can, you can uh, show that here. And here with the best way to reach, uh, same thing, you will change the color of the, 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 uh, the, the little squares. So of course, uh, someone who's uh, of a certain age might not be as savvy with the uh, social media. So they might prefer uh, being uh, like getting information from a newsletter. Uh, some younger people might prefer social media. Some people is through networking when it's for the partners, that sort of stuff. So you can identify here what kind of uh, media or medium uh, is better uh, to to reach that specific persona. So as I said, it's a very, very general tool. Usually you'll create two or three persona. I've done that exercise myself for some of the projects I'm on and it's always very useful, not only for the communications, but also for the kind of activities that, that we're doing. 
So that's it when it comes to the different tools that I wanted to show you today. Uh, it was just an idea. I just wanted to show you sort of uh, the different formats that the tools can take. Uh, by no way, it's it's uh, like we have so many tools that it's it's just the tip of the iceberg of the tools that are available for you. So when it comes to the access to accessing the toolbox, uh, there are four main uh, steps. I, I sort of put in four steps, but it's very straightforward once again. So the first step, step would be to make sure that you are part of the machineries community. Uh, so you can uh, join the machinery for free by filling the form on our website, which is www.machinerie-des-arts.ca. I'll make sure that uh, either Nick or uh, people at Elan also have the link so they can share it to you if you don't remember or if you ever want to, to join the community. Uh, so the second step would be to create an account for our login area uh, using the same email you provided in the form to join a community. So all this information, once again, is on our website on the same page. Uh, there's usually a 15 minute delay between the moment you join a community and can create your account. Uh, that's just things related to uh, the system updating itself. Uh, but usually if you for example, if you uh, create, if you join the community, just peruse our services to have an idea of what we offer, take uh, 15 minutes, you can create uh, your account and then access the toolbox uh, very quickly. So the next step would be to log into the account once you've created uh, that account uh, to get into the tool section uh, and get access to the full toolbox directory. So you can either display the tools by category or language or even search for tools uh, for specific tools using keywords uh, in the search bar. So it's a uh, it's a very easy to use uh, system. Uh, and finally, when it comes to the documents themselves, when you access the, the tools, so all of the tools are currently hosted through Google Drive. Uh, so they are either in uh, Google Sheet or Google uh, Doc uh, format. So all of the original tools are in read-only mode when you get to them, uh, just in order to keep them in their original state. So everybody has the sort of uh blank tools when they access them so to edit them you either must uh you must either make copies uh, of each tool into your own drive or download them directly to your computer um we have a guide on the website once again that shows you a step-by-step step -step guide to, to that shows you how to to copy or download the tools uh and once you've downloaded or copied the tools as i said earlier you can transform them, you can edit them as much as you can. Uh, there's no uh, no uh, uh, limitations about that. You make them the way you want them to, to be. Um, so I'd say that's pretty much it for, uh, for the presentation today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to, to ask them. And I also, well, first of all, thank you, Ariel. That was great. And uh, I think a really helpful overview of even just a, a small selection of tools, a really good sort of representative sample and gives people an idea of like just what kind of stuff is, is out there. Also, if you have any question that pops later, uh, you can also uh, either get in touch with Nick or myself. Uh, I'll make sure that Nick has my, my contact info. Actually, I could probably put it into the chat. Perhaps we will leave it at that. And um, I will once again uh, offer my sincere thanks, Ariel, for for you being with us and, and guiding us through the toolbox. Um, again, I, I know I've said this already, but it, it really is such an impressive resource. Um, and just looking at some of the tools that you presented today, um, you know, time is so valuable for people, whether you work in a, a sort of a small organization or you're, you know, an independent artist with a, a very entrepreneurial focus, you know, just by virtue of having these really sort of complete and, and competent tools already designed for you that you don't have to, you know, make your own from scratch. I feel like it's such a, such a huge help and such a huge advantage to people that, uh, that it, it's really great. 
Well, thanks for having me today. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, the tools are getting more and more widespread, so it's very useful when some people are familiar with that those tools and they get to another organization or work with other artists who are also using those same tools because the format is the same. And we try to go with very general sort of uh, structures and, and formats uh, to make them as uh, as sort of applicable in as many as situa situations as possible. So uh, yes, thanks once again. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, don't hesitate. If you want to know more about our activities or services, you can also uh, subscribe to our newsletter from our website uh, to get all the information. Of course, more uh, most of our content and activities are offered in French. However, we're always working to offer more and more stuff in English uh, when it comes to our uh, pedagogical activities. Um, or to offer them in both languages, at least. Uh, so, yes. Thank you again. Thank you, Aria. Um, and on a final note, um, I will thank, thank everybody for being here. It was great to have you. Um, so I'll be in touch once the, the YouTube link is available. Um, of course, we do have you know, plenty more webinars and, uh, and online events coming up. So the best way to stay on top of that is to sign up for the LN newsletter. Um, but with that said, I wish everybody uh, a great rest of your day and uh, thank you again for joining us. Bye. Thank you everyone.